In TV news broadcasts, ideally, the items are illustrated by pictures. Isn't it difficult to get them on time? And do you have anything to do with this? Um, no, I don't directly. Um, I think it depends what sort of image you're looking for. Quite often, the um, uh, news pictures, if they want, if it's a story that has recently broken, and they don't have any material that is suitable, that's when you see some slightly strange things sometimes. Um, there are huge libraries of old film footage now, so if you're covering anything that's happened within the last week, you can usually find the right sort of material to, to illustrate it. Thirteen. In some countries, newscasters do not refrain from expressing a personal opinion. What do you think of this? It would be one way of doing it. Um, I think most people would find uh, that rather strange if they were, for instance, watching the evening news. They want to know what has happened, not what one reporter's view is. I think it's also true that they're quite influ influential as to how people understand what is happening in the news and I think that is a, a great responsibility and I think it's almost impossible for any one individual to be completely unbiased but I do think that all possible manner of controls should surround that individual to, so that he is forced to be as unbiased as possible. Fourteen. Being in the news, of course, means free publicity for a political party. Yes, it does, and we are, we are obliged to be neutral. For instance, if we do um, an interview with a member of the government, which could be seen as an advertisement, if you like, for the Conservative Party, we have to devote the same amount of airtime to a programme with the opposition parties. On uh, one of our major current affairs programmes that I worked on, we used to keep a rough tally, and uh, if we devoted one or two programmes more to the right than the left, then we would adjust that at a later stage. Fifteen. The British are very good at making documentaries, I've always thought. There is a very good tradition of, of making documentaries here, and I think part of the reason that they've been allowed to develop is because of the guidelines that we have to adhere to. They require such a lot of research, um, and usually a lot of filming and a lot of editing. And sadly, they don't get a huge audience so we probably don't make more than we really have to because we are a commercial organization and we have to uh, get the advertising in 16 What about interviewing techniques? Would you say there's a lot of difference between one interviewer and the next? I think it's a skill that is not easily learned at all. I've watched one of our best political interviewers, Brian Walden, interviewing politicians. 
and he has to do that live. He's got to listen to what his interviewee is saying, be able to react to it. At the same time, he might have an earpiece from which he's receiving directions from two or three people. He might be hearing the director saying, um, your nose is getting shiny, when the camera's off you dab it with your handkerchief. He might hear the editor saying, no, push him harder on unemployment, um, you're taking the wrong angle. He's got to be able to cope with all those things, and I think that some people just can't do that. Seventeen. Einde onderdeel A. Onderdeel B. U gaat luisteren naar een tweetal gesprekken met medewerkers van het Engelse dagblad The Independent. In het eerste gesprek komt Heather Gibson van de marketingafdeling aan het woord. In de nu volgende voorbeeldpassage stelt zij zich aan u voor. Er hoeft nog geen vraag te worden beantwoord. My name is Heather Gibson and I work in the marketing department at the Independent newspaper. Before I moved down to London I worked for um, regional newspapers in Scotland and um, doing much the same work as I do now, but it was for regional newspapers very much in the northeast of Scotland. Example. The toets begint nu. The Independent was founded fairly recently. Could you tell us something about the beginning of the company? Um, the editor of our newspaper wanted a, a, a company which really wanted to do the best for its employees, where every employee from a director down to a postroom boy could have a say in the running of the company. And to that end, when we first started the company up, we all took shares in the company, which meant that we were motivated to make the company a success. One. Um, the, the money that was raised was all put towards the launch of the newspaper with some money for the second year, um, but we, hadn't, we didn't need to use that because after a year and a half we became profitable for the first time which was ahead of what we had forecast for ourselves. Um, and also we're coming up to launch The Independent on Sunday and we don't have to look for refinancing for that. We will finance that from within um, our own company. Two. Before we launched on 7th of October 1986, we, um, for the 30 days before that, we had a newspaper which was absolutely complete. That was then put into households. The next week we got their views back and the editorial team were briefed on it. They then made subtle changes to the newspaper and then it then went back into research. So for 30 days we did that. Three. The very first newspaper that we brought out um, bears no resemblance to the first dummy that was made. The changes were so staggering. The very first dummy that was produced had full colour throughout. It had very big headings. It wasn't very appealing. The final dummy was very restrained. It uh, didn't have any colour in it at all because we find that if you use colour, people tend to associate that with the down market newspapers. Four. What is the position of the editor within the company? The editor sees the overall paper um, sometimes. He's very reliant on his editors. He has a sports editor, he has a home news editor, he has a picture editor, uh, and they are really responsible at the end of the day for what occurs in their own pages. And they've been obviously carefully selected to work in the independent because they would reflect a sort of independence themselves. Five.
you will always get journalists who you know have their own particular political beliefs but we try to keep that to a minimum and we have various columns which we call free speech and you would get two people it might be a journalist it might be somebody um, an actress who wants to talk about what's happening to the arts and the theatres in Britain and we will also give another person who has the opposite side of view the same space the reader can then read both and make up their own mind about it six We're not really out to sway people's minds to anything. We would rather inform people so they can make up their own mind because our readers are fairly intelligent. Um, if they want to read a newspaper which reflects the government's line, then they read the Daily Telegraph, also the Times. It's an establishment newspaper. We tend to steer clear of that. We don't get involved in party politics. Seven... How does the newspaper actually get into the hands of your readers? We have about 50% which are delivered to people's homes. The rest are either picked up at the newsagent or they're picked up by vendors. Some also go into offices and th these are circulated around the office. But we try and get our home delivery rate as high as possible because then that's a guaranteed sell, not just hoping that somebody's going to pick the paper up on the way to work. Eight. We also have a policy where we um, actively go to airlines and say to them, have you considered taking the independent on board because for most business and first class you are given a courtesy copy of a newspaper and part of our promotion is to make airlines aware of the fact that a lot of our readers do fly um, business class and they would actually like to have the independent there. Um, we do special rates for airlines where they offer courtesy copies. Nine. Um, we did a survey just before um, we launched the newspaper amongst MPs, members of parliament, and we found that a third of our readers were voting Conservative, a third were in the Labour Party, and a third were Liberals at that time. So we, we're, you know, we know that um, the people in power, if you like, the MPs, they're a fairly representative sample. We don't have, you know, one far too many of one type of reader and far too many of another. Ten. We have been responsible for exposing the Guinness affair, which was quite a, um, a large financial scandal in Britain. The Department of Trade and Industry, which is a government body, took us to court because they wanted to know who our source was. Our belief was that if we start revealing sources, then we won't be able to find the information out. We were actually doing the government's business there because we actually discovered this scandal before their own people did. And so they were a bit annoyed about that and took us to court. So we were fined quite heavily for not revealing our source, but we still haven't. Eleven. We have sometimes turned away advertising, which we don't think is in the right style to be independent. If it's overtly political, we probably wouldn't take it. There was one piece which was sent to us by a certain um, Arabian faction because we had one of the Saudi Arabian ministers visiting Britain. It was quite a hostile ad and we refused to carry it. Twelve. 